So when it comes to investing in Pokemon cards, people sometimes ask if it's worth investing in other cards besides English cards, you know, like Japanese, Korean, Spanish, German, you know, like cards in other languages. And you know, that's a very good question. So very generally speaking, English cards are usually the most desirable cards out of all the languages. And I mean, that's pretty obvious. You know, I think everybody knows that. But what about Japanese cards? You know, sometimes you do hear about Japanese cards being as good as English cards, or sometimes even Japanese cards being better than English cards. And what is the reason for that? Well, first you gotta understand that the Japanese cards are the OG cards. They are the original printed cards. They were the first ones to print the Pokemon cards and the English version of the cards were the ones that copied the Japanese cards, all right? And then the other languages, you know, like Spanish, Korean, German, they copied the English ones, all right? Does that make sense? Japanese are the OGs but English are the most popular ones. But when does the Japanese cards become the more popular ones? Well, besides being the OG cards, the Japanese cards do have some things going for them that makes them better than the English cards. And one of those things is that they have a limited supply run. So in the English set, when we release a set like here in the States, Pokemon, they've been printing cards to meet demand. If there is a high demand, they are printing cards to meet that demand. And they are even printing cards that surpass the demand so even once the demand is met there are still cards on the shelves for people to buy like they are overprinted and there's still like an abundant supply of cards out in the stores but in Japanese they have a limited supply and like when it comes to like special sets like special sets like Pokemon 151 like that set the Japanese like if you want a box of that cards you have to go through like a lottery system like where they choose a limited amount of people to receive those boxes of cards you know like, like they don't just print it to meet demand they have a limited supply and only a certain amount of people are gonna get that supply. And if you want a box of cards from like the special set like 151 and you wanna buy a box, you gotta enter through their lottery system in Japan for Japanese people only. And then you gotta get chosen. And once you get chosen, then you are allowed to buy a box of Pokemon cards from like the special set. And also if you go to like the Pokemon Center in Japan or like stores that sell Pokemon cards and you try to buy like a sealed booster box, like they'll sell you a booster box, but they'll cut the wrapping open because they wanna discourage people from like hoarding or scalping helping these booster boxes so they open the booster box which encourages you to open up like the card packs inside because the booster box isn't sealed anymore but I mean when you do go online you can buy booster boxes that are sealed but uh, you can see when you go online some of these booster boxes are very expensive because they are limited and Japan usually puts like a cap on how many cards they print unlike the English version which prints to demand and over prints all right so that's why the Japanese Pokemon cards are sometimes more desirable than the English cards. Another reason is, is because Japanese cards usually have better quality than the English cards. And sometimes the Japanese cards have a better hollow pattern. So if you compare the Japanese hollow patterns to the English hollow patterns, you'll see that the Japanese hollow patterns are sometimes a lot more cooler, a lot more vibrant, and a lot more unique than the English version. The English version sometimes feels like very plain and simple, but the Japanese feels very cool, very unique, very high quality. And sometimes if you buy, if you buy like, let's say like the Moonbryon and you compare it like the English Moonbryon to like the Japanese Moonbryon, the Japanese one looks a lot cooler, man. So that's the reason why some Japanese cards are more desirable because of the cool hollow patterns and because of the print quality. And like with English cards, sometimes you'll get a card that's very misaligned and very miscut and it kind of ruins your day if it's a hollow, you know? But Japanese, they have like very good standards. Like their quality assurance is like A++, while the English cards, it seems like their quality assurance is like, I don't know, like a C plus or like a C minus where it's kind of like come on English you could do a bit better man you know I want I want to make sure like them the cards I receive are actually like you know centered and not misaligned right so another thing that makes the Japanese cards more desirable and I think this one is big this one is number one and this is the reason why I started getting into Japanese cards and the reason is is because in Japan they receive exclusive cards that never get released in the other sets they never get released in the English set and they never get released in any other language Language except Japanese. Some of these exclusive cards are really cool, super desirable, and it's also the reason that many people got into Japanese cards is because they want these Japanese cards because the English cards don't exist. And this all started back in the day when Japanese cards first started being printed in the 90s. Like yeah, the English cards, they copied the Japanese, but there were cards in the Japanese
Japanese version that never got released in any other language. And a good example of some of these cards are the Vending Machine series. So if you look up the Japanese promos, the Vending Machine promos, those cards have very unique art and it's art that was only released in Japan. And it's probably like, if you don't know about the Vending Machine Pokemon cards, then this art style is probably new to you. And the reason for that is, is because it only got released in Japan. And these were cards that were released back in the day. In modern days, some exclusive Japanese cards are, for example, the Pokemon stamp promos. That was a collaboration between Pokemon and the post offices in Japan. And in order for you guys to get one of these, you had to, again, enter a lottery system in Japan. Another example of these are like the Pokemon Munch or the Monk promos. These were released also only in Japan. You could only get them like at the Pokemon Center in Japan or by going to a specific museum. And then you got like the Pikachu and Mario and Luigi promos. Very cool cards that are very expensive to buy now between the two very iconic characters, Pikachu and Mario released back in 2016. These are very desirable right now. And a lot of people want them. A lot of people all over the world want them, but they were released only in Japan and it was limited. They didn't print like a whole bunch of them. Very cool cards. And then you also got like the Pokemon Center promos. So, you know, Japan has a lot of Pokemon centers and when they open up a new Pokemon Center, like the Pokemon Center in Osaka, like when they opened that up, they released the Pokemon Center Osaka Pikachu version. And then when they opened the Pokemon Center in Sapporo, they released the Pikachu Sapporo card, you know, stuff like that, man. Those cards, all those cards are all Japan exclusive and they never ever got an English release or any other language for that matter. That's what makes Japanese cards desirable and that's what makes Japanese cards sometimes more desirable than English cards, understand? So generally speaking, English cards are the most popular ones. They are the most well-known and people usually want the English cards. Like English is popular, English is number one. Like nobody's denying that English is number one. But Japanese is not far behind. So if you wanna buy Japanese cards or even like invest in them, it's not a bad idea. You know, like I said, Japanese cards are desirable as well. Now the other languages besides English and besides Japanese, that's kind of hard for me to say to like invest or buy because people like usually they don't really have anything that's cool or exclusive to them. I know China has been releasing some exclusive boxes, but at the end of the day, people aren't really searching for like cards in other languages besides English and Japanese. If you want to collect them, I think like Korean, Chinese, Spanish, all these other languages, I think they are fun to collect and they are affordable. But if you want to invest in them, I think Japanese and English are the only ones you should focus on because historically they've done good and in the future they will continue to do good. But anyway, I just want to hop on here, you know, kind of talk about Japanese cards for a bit. You know, let me know your thoughts, drop a comment. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, you know, let me know. But yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one, right? Peace out.